Hello and welcome to the One Life Church devotional series where we cover the entire Bible in 20 months. Well, the next chapters are 1 Timothy chapter 5 and Psalm 94. And in 1 Timothy 5, Paul gets to the heart of the gospel in your home. So I'm here in my home and the gospel that I preach is not just to audiences and in the public domain. It's got to work on the home front. And so he goes straight to how you deal with the weakest in your family, who are the aged and the children, I suppose. So uh, I'm getting to that age category now where I'm fast approaching the aged category. So he says, do not discipline an older man harshly. Doesn't mean you can't correct an older man, but just do it with dignity, do it with honor and respect. An older woman like your mom, treat younger girls as you would your sister with absolute purity. That's how the gospel is outworked on the home front. And, and then he, he turns his attention to older ladies who must be the weakest of the weak in family units in those days. Can you imagine they have lost their husband uh, in a patriarchal society where they're excluded mainly from the work place? How do they get money? How do they look after themselves? So he says, look, it's fitting for the church to look after the old ladies, the widows in a church. But if they have family, the family should look after them. He says, if you don't, you're worse than the heathen. That's what he says in this particular chapter. And so then he, he further makes clarity here. He breaks it into two categories. He says, look, the younger widows are probably going to want to get remarried. So he says in verse 14, so I counsel them to get remarried, to have children and to glorify God that way. If they're older, and he seems to put the aged in the category over 60, which um, actually makes me quite happy that I'm still in the younger category. He says the ladies who are over 60, if they haven't got family and they love God, put them on that widow's list. And then, of course, the church rallies around. His attention then moves to elders in the church. So how do you treat an elder? So he says, listen, those who direct the affairs of the church are worthy of double honor. Remember in those days, elders were martyred, elders were being prosecuted. And uh, he's basically saying they, they're having it hard, boys. Uh, honor them. And, and then he says, particularly those whose job it is to preach, they could be doing something else. They could be making income. They could be flying below the radar, but they're not. And, you know, look after them. And so he implies... Uh, you know, provide for them. And so that's the way that the Lord has set it up. When a church gets going and the elders are directing and they're feeding the people and they're working, don't muzzle the ox, is the verse there, while he is busy treading the grain. And then he looks at elders who are misbehaving. He says, look, if there's an accusation against an elder, uh, you don't pay too much attention if it's just come from one busy body because the devil wants to discredit the church and that's one of the ways he does it. I've been accused of all sorts of things over 30 years. And, you know, when it comes from two or three witnesses, it, it needs to be considered, judged, looked at, taken very, very seriously. But if just someone's gossiping, they don't pay too much attention to the gossip. But two or three witnesses, deal with it. And if they have sinned, You've got to bring them up in front of the entire church. That's what it says here. And, and reprove them publicly. Those are the words. Why is that? And this is say, God, isn't that a little bit harsh? Now listen, they, they are saying, follow me as I follow Christ. If they are preaching and their life is not lining up to what they are preaching, we call that hypocrisy. And God says that's got to be exposed. Very liberating, safe passage of scripture. We as a local church certainly try to live by that and say, um, everyone who preaches needs to be accountable what they say. Our lives need to be open, transparent, be able to see my home, see my family, see my personal world, see my financial world. And um, we are not perfect, but we, we need to be open and transparent. And then he says, don't be hasty with the laying on of hands. Don't make every Tom, Dick and Harry an elder. Uh, steady on, wait before the Lord because it has implications. Now, Psalm 94 is the psalmist talking about God as the avenger, as the judge. 
And he opens by saying, the Lord is the God who judges. He says, and people are crazy. They think God's not watching because nothing's happening right now. And he says, like, you fools, first man. Does he who fashion the ear not hear? Does he who form the eye not see? Blessed is the one you discipline, Lord. The one you teach from your law. And he, he says, again, judgment will be based on righteousness because God, God sees everything. God judges everything. And we are crazy if we think we can live little secret lives. We can pretend to be pious and spiritual, live little secret lives outside of the ambit of God's gaze. And so this has really been a spotlight on the home front. I trust that as you look at it and as you process it, God ministers to you.